Right, let's talk about separate receive antennas because one of the things I've been looking at recently is using a uh, loop antenna to receive on because it's quieter than my main transmit antenna. Um, the problem with that is it introduces complexity into the system because you need a powered amplifier to drive it and um, you want to make sure you don't transmit into that um, amplifier uh, with your radio otherwise uh, basically you blow the amplifier up so um, you have to be really quite careful with your uh, switching and ideally you also want to chop the power to that amplifier as well so you don't overload it um, when you key up your radio now that introduces a lot of complexity into it so I've been looking online and I've come up with this uh, other potential idea so let me show you my uh, screen over here so I'll uh, put a link to this uh, website in the description, but uh, basically it's kk5jy.net, kilo kilo five Juliet Yankee.net. Um, and basically it's a loop on the ground. So uh, it's a square piece of wire laid on the ground or buried just under the ground. I've actually uh, buried mine under the ground. Um, I went around with a, spade and just put a tiny slit around the perimeter of the garden and uh, I buried it I don't know probably uh, maybe a couple of centimeters deep it, you don't want it too deep underground and um, so um, this is basically what you have and they say 15 foot per side um, you can go bigger than that we'll come to that it, there's a paragraph on that later so we'll come to that but you don't want it any more than the full wavelength on the highest frequency that you're going to use. So 15 foot, and by the way, you have to factor in the velocity factor on that as well. So for 20 meters, if you want to use this on 20, it needs to be uh, 20 meters less the velocity factor of the wire. So the design they show on here that they've modeled is um, 15 foot each leg. Now, um, 15 foot works out roughly about four, four and a half meters. So um, this comes to just under 20 meters. So this one would be okay. And it, it is directional as well. So you get um, a loop, a lobe even either side. So much like you would a dipole, I guess. Um, you can make these directional by using two loops if you've got the space to do that. Not many people have. So um, mine's actually a bit longer. I think we're about uh, five or six meters each length. So it's, uh, mine's a bit big for 20 meters. I really put it in for uh, primarily for 80 and 40 as well in the hope that it would be slightly lower noise. Now, if we go down here, so you've got your um, transformer, which uh, is basically some uh, very thin wire uh, put in a box wrapped around the ferrite core. So if I switch you back onto the main camera So what it is basically is it's uh, One of these this is type 73 uh, I don't know if you can see through the uh, Hole in the center there. It's one of these uh, Binocular types. Um, I'm looking at my screen there. You, you can just about see that it's one of these binocular type uh, ferrite beads and they say to use this uh, Teflon um, wire which is actually really really thin and fiddly to work with and it, it's very fragile as well so I wrapped my coil from that now the problem with that is like I said it's very fragile so uh, if this ferrite core is moving around inside your box then uh, there is a, a good chance it's going to break the wire so let me show you what I did so this is my one little uh, plastic box there, your two connections on the top. And if you look inside there, I'm trying to get it in focus. I'm using a different camera today. Um, so you can just about see the ferrite bead in, in the uh, box there. And I've actually just put, this is just hot glue um, from a glue gun. So I've just melted a load of hot glue in there, just hold everything in place, stop it moving around. Then, uh, that box goes outside and uh, each end of the loop connects onto there. So 
that's what it is. Uh, and you can see um, your diagram for it there. Uh, two turns on the primary and five to six turns on the uh, secondary. Um, I think I used six turns on mine. Um, again, you need to be careful to make sure you don't transmit into this because uh, the likelihood is if you try and transmit into it, you'll just melt that wire. But um, if we look at the uh, uh, plots, th these are what um, the computer says you should get uh, in terms of your radiation patterns. It shows you uh, different frequencies there. So that's 80 meters, 160 meters, which are the main two frequencies I'll probably use it on. Uh, maybe also seven meters, uh, sorry, seven megahertz as well. So uh, basically this, looking at these uh, plots, this should make quite a nice Envis antenna, which is basically what I'm doing here. I've got an uh, NFED halfway for 80 meters. Uh, I might put up a vertical for uh, 40 and uh, I might be able to load that on 160. We'll, we'll see. I've I've got a bit of a plan coming up for that. That'll be uh, later on. But And then if we look at the uh, plot uh, radiation pattern the other way around, you can see there your two lobes. So I think, and then it goes on, lots of information here. I'm not going to read uh, through it all. Um, it says uh, something about preamplifiers here. Um, there was another YouTube channel, I forget, who it was someone else tried that and they didn't have much uh, much success with the preamplifier so um, and in actual fact it even says on here when run on uh, 80 and 40 this antenna needs no preamplifier so um, and like I said earlier you can scale this up um, as I said you don't want it more than a whole wavelength for the uh, frequency you're using, but you can scale this up and it will um, increase your signal strength along with the noise as well, I would imagine. But um, I think the idea is to keep this as short as possible. So I've put mine down. I've literally just gone around the perimeter of the garden. Let's put you back on the main camera. So yeah, I've got, just gone around the full perimeter of the garden and uh, I intend to use it primarily on 40 and 80, maybe on 160 as well. I wouldn't mind having a bit of a play about on 160. So I think what I'm going to do, just to start with, I'm going to connect it all up. I'm going to uh, put the uh, put the lid on uh, my transformer here and connect it up outside. And uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just use the uh, RSP1A, the uh, SDR receiver, and um, we'll just do... Uh, just do some whisper tests first of all, I think, and uh, see roughly what sort of uh, signal to noise we get, what sort of radiation pattern we get, etc. etc. So maybe try that on uh, 80 meters, 40, and maybe 160. So I think that's our starting point. Okay, so outside, this is going to be a little bit difficult to see because it's uh, dark out here. I've put as much light on it as I can, but uh, there's my uh, transformer unit and the two ends of my loop and uh, I've just taped it up on this uh, garden cane to uh, keep it up out of the uh, damp and moisture and uh, that just connects off goes uh, up into the house somewhere up there you won't be able to see that but the uh, loop on the ground goes um, let's zoom you out a little bit out along that fence line way down to the bottom of the garden down there uh, stops before it gets to the shed before those solar panels goes uh, out underneath the caravan back along that fence over there and then uh, comes back over here and uh, I've uh, just wedged it in between the uh, paving slabs there and back over to our uh, transformer over here Okay, preliminary results then. So um, I'm looking at the, uh, grab my mouse. I'm looking at the uh, whisper tests here. This one 
that you're seeing now is 40 metres and frankly quite disappointing. Um, now I don't know if that's because there was nobody on 40 metres or whether that's the antenna not performing well. Uh, go on to 80 metres and it actually seems to do okay. Um, so okay not looking too bad on 80 metres. Then I go on to uh, 160 metres and again very disappointing performance. Now I don't know if that's down to the antenna or whether that's down to people just not listening to Whisper or using Whisper. So I think what we need to do here is uh, go on to um, my SDR here and uh, there was a station here having a chat a couple of minutes ago. Uh, that is extremely quiet on the SDR. What if I switch on to uh, the actual radio? I don't know how well this is going to come across on camera because uh, I haven't got a physical wide connection from the radio direct into the, uh, into the camera. Um, so it's just picking it up on the mic down here next to the radio. But that's on the radio. And that's via the SDR. I need to put my headphones on because I can't hear it. So SDR. Via radio. SDR via the radio. So that's, hang on, let me just turn that off. So I don't know, to me that seems fairly conclusive. Listening to it on the SDR on the computer here, uh, that's connected to the loop antenna. It was really, really quiet, but listening to it on the NFED half wave, which is connected direct to the radio, um, I'd say that was quite clear and very workable. So, I don't know, I think further testing needed. I think what I really need to do is put a uh, antenna switch in and connect both antennas via a switch direct to the SDR and then uh, run them both on here and switch between the two. Because on the SDR here, um, it actually gives you a signal to noise ratio. So I, th I think that would be the way to do it. But um, my first impressions with this antenna, not great to be honest with you. Just as a quick uh, curiosity, I've switched the uh, cable over on the uh, SDR. So um, this now is uh, coming direct from the NFED half wave antenna out there so not the loop on the ground just listen to the uh, difference in clarity and signal strength it's not a, uh, a full extra story as in like a townhouse you know where the bedroom windows are in the, are in the loft in the room so uh, I think that's fairly <laughs> fairly damning and conclusive for that antenna but uh, there you go that's just a quick preliminary test I'll uh, I'll set it up properly and uh, actually check the SNR between the, you know, the signal to noise ratio between the uh, antennas and see what the difference actually is. But um, at first glance, it doesn't look great.